Colleagues, good afternoon. It's a little bit over 2 p.m. here on the Eastern Seaboard. We have approximately a little over 50 institutions who have joined us today to learn about the grant program and how Patrick and his team have leveraged the grant towards their strategic IT objectives. The agenda today shall cover topics on how to apply and qualify for a Campus Consortium grant and a brief walkthrough by Illinois College on leveraging this grant towards projects and their successful outcomes. Campus Consortium is the largest global association of higher ed institutions. The core of the grant program is to help institutions improve their retention, student services, enrollment or advancement objectives, essentially leveraging much needed funds to help achieve outcomes. Patrick would be an excellent point of reference and not only in the grant program or process, but if you're thinking of applying for any of these grants. He can also be a key resource to help you through the readiness assessment in terms of is your campus successful, not just the grant recipient, but successful implementation. Because at the end of the day, we at Campus Consortium are looking for campuses that have the need but also leverage the grant successfully so that you too can get a briefing such as this and share your lessons learned and share your experiences with other institutions. The grant that was won and leveraged by Illinois College was for single sign-on. These are the series of grants from Campus Consortium that are available to educational institutions, for instance, uh, cloud hosting, IT help to support, enterprise portal and mobile app, just to name a few, to make sure that the grant that you're applying to is the right grant that adds value to your particular context. We have also tried to make the grant as simple as possible, since some of you are also grant writers or work within your institution on the grant side, and some institutions don't have a grant team. The next major deadline is May 2nd, 2017, we have 14 available grants available till May 2nd, 2017. The application process is also somewhat flexible as we understand higher ed is busy and already short of staff. Uh, we usually will extend some flexi flexibility to the deadline if there is a valid reason for it. You're welcome to call us or call previous grant recipients for help or input on the questions. Other than Illinois College, you will see a slide of some other institutions that range from Louisiana State University to Belmont University to Bryant University, um, University of Arkansas system, uh, Shelton State Community College. Uh, so it doesn't really mean that you should be of any particular type of institution in terms of private, public, four-year tier. As long as you're a bona fide institution of higher ed, the grant program is available to you. That is a little bit of context on the grant application sort of timeframes and process. The key really here is how can any of these programs be relevant to you and allow you to achieve a strategic institutional objective in improving student experience or improving enrollment or advance, advances in processes, and we can ascertain that the project will be successful, which means that the grant funds will be well utilized. That really is what kind of drives our decision in making or what drives us to choose campuses. Without further ado, I would like to pass the platform to Patrick Brown, Chief Information Officer at Illinois College. Over to you, Patrick. Well, thank you, Roger. I appreciate it. Um, as Roger said, I'm Patrick Brown, CIO here at Illinois College. And uh, just a little bit of background about Illinois College. We are a small liberal arts college um, founded in 1829. We're actually the oldest uh, college in the state of Illinois. Um, right now, we have a total enrollment of around uh, 1,023. Um, our location is Jacksonville. We're kind of right in central Illinois, about 30 minutes west of Springfield, the state capital. And um, we were looking to integrate several systems. Um, 
our SIS ERP system, Genzabar, um, our LMS system, Moodle, and our email system, uh, Gmail, just being um, three such examples. And, you know, as it says here on the slide, we offer a variety of programs and majors, um, everything from, you know, biology and medical technology to, you know, physics and engineering in our, in our science uh, building. And um, we've been accredited by the Higher Learning Commission since 1913. And uh, we do have a, a chapter of the Phi Beta Kappa National Honor Society, which we're proud of, um, which was established in 1932. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, well, <laughs> I was going to talk about this uh, later, so, um, but actually I'll go ahead and, and talk about this now. We have been live since January here and, you know, been doing everything that we can to get the word out and get students involved. And it was nice to see uh, just last week, uh, March 31st on Friday, that our Student Senate, which is the, the kind of the governing body of the students and um, they're a, a group that represents our student body really well. They listen and um, they work towards getting things done that students need. Um, so they have a good relationship, you know, with us and IT. They have a good relationship with, you know, our provost and all of the, the VPs and the president. And they communicate well uh, with them and, and the students. And to see them put on their Facebook page um, this post that they're showing now about you know, the new portal and how they like it. Uh, you know, I like how they put, of course, crack knuckles, we got this. Uh, and talking about the, this portal that we were able to implement through um, the help of, of this grant. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so back to the beginning, you know, talking about what we were trying to do we had, you know, talked about single sign-on as something that we really needed for years. Um, you know, one of our probably biggest struggles definitely at the help desk level was the multiple logins that we would hand out to students as they came here and then, then changing passwords and then not knowing that changing one password affected another system or didn't affect another system. And so they were keeping track of multiple logins for, you know, things like, Moodle, um, again, the, the campus portal, JICS through Genspar, um, and their Gmail, that, you know, everything was separate. And so we started to look into things that were, you know, a small college, so a small uh, IT group as well. Um, you know, we're proud of what we do, but there's only so much we can do in a day. And, and uh, so we started with um, an open source trying to implement CAS. And um, we got a couple things working in there, but it never really turned into much. Uh, it was difficult to find the time, do the research and everything that was needed to make sure that everything was coded correctly. And so uh, we started, I think, the next year looking at ADFS, um, which is a Microsoft product. Uh, we have Active Directory, so Active Directory Federated Services is a way that you can stand up single sign-on uh, in a Microsoft way using um, that platform that's built into the server. Um, so we had greater success there. We were able to get um, a few programs um, like the portal, the JICS portal for our ERP system and our, our student services system tied in there. But the problem was that we still weren't we weren't delivering it in a way that was convenient and it didn't really look like single sign-on. So they could sign into, for example, the student portal. And from there, they were signed in and they could go straight into something else like Moodle or Echo 360 or another program that they would want to use and they would still be logged in, but they didn't know it. There was no page that showed them um, that they had that ability and communicating that was difficult. And so we still, you know, like I said, really weren't where we needed to be. Um, 
in, again, being a small institution, uh, especially in Illinois right now, it's difficult to find the budget to do the things that you know that you need to do. Um, so this opportunity and, and getting this grant was really great for us. Uh, we can't say enough about campus construction and the help they provided to us to be able to work with uh, a company like Quick Launch. Um, so we were able to um, tie in all those things like JICS, like Echo 360, um, Office 365 so students can download Office for free. Uh, they can now go directly in and fill out their time cards. They can go to CareerLink, which was another system, the, the virtual bookstore, uh, all these things throughout the process. Um, you know, and, and again, we started on uh, January 11th, 2017. Um, we've been serving, you know, over 1,000 students, faculty, and staff now uh, since that time. And as it points out on this slide, this does cover uh, implementation, the software license of the single sign-on platform, and um, everything like that. Can we go to the next slide, please. Um, so this is just a, a screenshot of what it looks like when someone goes to login.ic.edu, it's going to take them to a login page. We put some text there to describe what they're doing there, what it's for, uh, who to contact if they can't get in, and that sort of thing. Um, once a student or faculty staff authenticates, uh, if you go to the next slide. So they get a portal page like this. This is actually a, a screenshot, but, uh, or a couple different screenshots. But of course, if you actually log in, it just scrolls down nicely. I will say that another nice thing about this page is it is responsive design. So if you pull it up on a mobile device, uh, it looks great. You know, it sizes down correctly. We've tested multiple multiple phones, and um, the buttons work well with that. So it is very mobile friendly. Um, you can see that there's a search box there at the top. So, you know, we put, for example, meal plan balance, which is really a, a deep link into our student portal, but that's just another thing that you can do um, that's very helpful because, for example, students would need to sign in to JICS, which is what we call our Connect To is our name for it, so you see the Connect To portal button there. They would need to sign in there, they would need to go to the Students tab, and then they would need to find um, their residential life button, and then they would see their meal plan. You know, so they're four, at least four clicks in, and that's if they know where they're going. Um, and that's the kind of thing you get into when you, you know, you have so much data that it needs to be in the student portal, and you know, you organize it in the best way that you can. But it's still, it's always multiple clicks, right, to find that. So it's little simple things like that where it's like I need to know what my meal plan balance is to be able to put a button right here on a platform that the students are familiar with. You saw that in their, um, their post on Facebook. They, they love it. I mean, that's, that's what they want. And so um, we're hoping to tie that in as well to our, uh, our Illinois College app. Uh, you can look at that. It's out in the App Store. But to be able to have the single sign-on portal right there within the IC app, again, because it does render so well on mobile, uh, to let them access everything from their phones, that's, that's where they want to be anyway. So that, that was definitely a great feature. Um, just talking about application usage a bit here, the analytics that the platform provides are great. Um, we've been able to keep track of you know, usage. Um, and you can do it on an hourly basis, daily basis, you know, weekly, monthly, so any way that you want to look at it. Um, so, for example, if you send an email out and you want to see how many people logged in um, within that next hour, that sort of thing, you can you can definitely drill down and see what you want to see. Um, so we were able to get uh, just in March 1,385 um, separate invitations this month already. With, I'm sure the Facebook post again from our student senate help at 371 just um, since the beginning of April, and of course. You know, depending on your school size, for, for us that's a very good number. 
Um, we've seen about 25% of our overall student faculty and staff utilize this product already. And we know that coming up in the fall, uh, with new students coming in, we actually get you know an hour with them that we may never get again um, to be in front of all the students at the same time. So um, in multiple sessions, of course, but to be able to talk about it then, we know our, our usage is going to go up in the fall as we bring in a new class of students that is going to start using this from day one. Um, the other nice thing you see here is you can see what your top five, bottom five are, and you can actually. Uh, with that drop down where it says all apps, you can look at each thing that you put within your single sign-on portal to really gauge how well are they using each thing. Is it relevant anymore? You know, maybe we look at the bottom five here and we say, okay, nobody's, nobody's going to Horizon View. Do we need to rename that? Uh, you know, do they know what it is? Or, you know, and then you could try different things and see where it moves, that sort of thing. So all this uh, data that you gets built into the platform and um, very valuable as you're trying to get your users to know what's out there and, and start to use everything. Um, and so again, I, just, I want to clarify, it's been great to work with the Quick Lunch team. They've been very responsive um, to every question we have, whether it's through email. Um, we had great communication as far as scheduled phone calls to keep us on track. Um, we told them that we wanted to launch before spring semester uh, when we started this project last fall and you know they did everything they needed to do to make sure that that happened. Um, so it's been a great experience for us. We're still working together. That's another nice thing when you think about working with a company to implement a project. Sometimes you know we've experienced in the past where Everything's great until you launch, and then all of a sudden, maybe you're not as important anymore. Um, maybe you're, you know, just contacting support, and you're waiting, and, and you know, you can't get the same level of service as you were when you were putting it out. I will say that that's not true. Um, with them, they've been great. Um, we're still moving forward with monthly calls, despite the fact that we're live. We're still going to continue to add new things to the portal and having their help with that um, as we continue to move forward is great and not something uh, that I'd be confident that you would get with um, every company for a single sign-on. So I've been really happy with them. Uh, I'm sure that I missed some things and I'd just like to open it up for questions. Thank you very much there, Patrick. I appreciate that. Um, information and your best practices shared. Um, Pat Patrick, are there any uh, particular uh, re recommendations that you have for, um, if you recall, uh, the first time you rolled out uh, through the grant application process, um, anything that you would suggest uh, in terms of best ideas or practices on the grant application? Um, from what I remember on the grant application process, um, there was an open line of communication there as well. Um, you know, we basically illustrated our need um, and, you know, like I described on the phone call today of what we were trying to do, what our struggle was, and, um, you know, relatively straightforward, not like um, certainly some grants that I've been involved with where, you know, you need to write uh, 55 pages of content uh, to try to get something. So we, we definitely appreciated that as well uh, with it being fairly straightforward with the data required and, um, and that sort of thing. Great. So, uh, Patrick, uh, there's a question from the audience. They're asking that how difficult was it for you to budget for a solution like this con considering that you already has had passed implementations that were unsuccessful or you know had issues with right so um, wh what kind of budgeting that you needed to go through how how did you uh, how did the grant qualification go through in terms of uh, what did you have to provide in terms of information to get this grant like for example did you have to do anything special was it an easy grant application was it difficult w what was your input on that mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I thought the grant application itself was relatively easy comparatively uh, when you look at a lot of the things that are out there. Um, the process was actually uh, more of the fact that the, the grant covered um, enough of it that we were able to fit it into our operational budget, which, which was a great thing. Um, you know, I don't know that I can get into specifics, but um, it, it actually worked really well compared to other solutions. You know, we looked at multiple um, solutions through other companies and, you know, with the grant that we were able to get, um, you know, we were really at uh, about a fifth or a sixth of the cost of even the, the lowest cost provider that, that we could find out there. Um, so certainly it, it, without this, I don't think we could have went forward with a true single sign-on solution. Um, so it worked out that, you know, the provost that, that I, re I report to the provost here, um, basically went forward to her and said, you know, hey, I, I could, this is, we've been looking for this for years. We haven't been able to find a way, you know, to get enough budget to do it. Um, but with Quick Launch and this grant, you know, they're, they're able to, to meet us where I think that I can fit it in. You know, we may not be able to do X this year. Um, and it was really just a conversation. And, uh, and at that point, we, you know, she agreed. She knew that we needed to do it as well. And uh, so we were able to move forward from there. Um, did that answer everything, Annie? Did I miss something there? Yes, Patrick, that answers. We have another question from the audience. They say, how much staff or labor does it require to do this kind of an implementation? And, you know, how, how, much, how many months does it require to constantly give in to set something up like this? Is it easy to handle or deem the full of blown IT staff? Yeah, so we have, let me actually pull up the portal and look right now. Um, so we have about 22 items in there. Now, not everything in our uh, Quick Launch portal is tied into single sign-on. So we do have some out there that are just um, helpful links that, you know, they, they have a hard time finding, you know, a certain page, like where do I go to download the IC mobile app? So there's a button for that. So that's something that um, I didn't I didn't mention before that you can, you can do, of course, just put a button that goes somewhere that's that students, faculty, and staff are looking for. Um, but anyway, so the amount of time that we that we put into it varied depending on, um, you know, what was a particular item that we were working on. I will say that, um, you know, on average, we probably didn't do more than um, 10 hours, 10, 12 hours in a month uh, based on our, our team's time. Quick Launch really helped uh, a lot with implementation that with several items that we needed to configure that were new. Um, we actually sent along documentation. You know, this is what uh, we got from this company. And they did the research. They looked into it. They actually did most of the work for us. Um, so, you know, that part was really great because certainly, you know, us and, and I'm sure many of your teams, um, we don't have a lot of time to give up. So that was a really important part. Um, again, probably 10 to 12 hours out of the most um, for us. Now, uh, I will qualify that with the fact that, you know, we did have JSCS kind of already done and we were able to leverage what we had done already in ADFS. And so, you know, that time was already spent up front, um, but, but for us, that's what it was, and, and so we were really happy with um, the amount of work that they, were, they took on themselves, and, and, you know, we would jump on a call and find out, hey, by the way, we think we have this done, why don't you test it out for us? So paper cut, for example, was a great uh, example of that, where we didn't do anything with paper cut. Uh, we just said, hey, it'd be great if, you know, everybody could just click on paper cut from this portal and be logged in so they can release their jobs or they can see how much they printed this month um, or they can go to web print and um, the quick launch team did that for us they figured that out um, had it all coded and ready to go and basically said okay paper cut we think is done when we got on the call that week and and so on that call we would uh, jump on 
log into the portal ourselves and with a test student account and test it out and, and it worked great. So um, that definitely saves a lot of time when, when they're doing that sort of work for you. So we really appreciated that. Thank you, Patrick, for that. We have another question that comes to us here that is how large was your IT team and how large is your IT team right now? <laughs> yeah, so we have a massive team of seven, including myself. Um, so as you can imagine, everyone on our team has multiple roles and uh, wears many hats. So um, we're a team of seven serving, again, um, really about 1,250 when you add all students, faculty, and, and staff. Um, when we're at capacity. Thank you so much. The next question that I have is I think for the Campus Consortium Grant Committee on the qualifiers for the grant. So typically the single sign-on grant covers the license of the software and the implementation cost for setting up the single sign-on platform. Now the qualification criteria is that A, you need to be a bona fide institution of higher ed. Two, um, you need to uh, make sure that you fill in the grant application with details that, are, that have been requested uh, and of a specified time frame on how soon you need to go live with the solution or what is your need of the hour, right? So we can see the urgency or the sense of urgency that you really, really need the grant fund. And the third would be uh, basically, um, uh, you know, letting us know that, you know, what, what is your budget coming up front with us so that if there's something that we need to do or negotiate with vendors that are associated with the, con with the consortium, we could do that for you. So um, that's pretty much for today's session. I'd like to hand the platform back to Roger, who's going to take us home. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Um, I do want to take a second to appreciate Patrick for taking out his uh, time to, uh, for this presentation today. We did enjoy working with you on the grant and the uh, implementation project and your support for the consortium has been tremendous. And thank you for all the work on the project, which are even more complicated than a system setting. Uh, we appreciate your time for this I seminar as well. Uh, please feel free to reach out to myself or Annie for any, uh, for everyone, um, we're going to wrap this up uh, a little bit, uh, 25 minutes early, I think we are. So the rest of the day is yours. Thank you so much, and uh, have a great day. This is Campus Consortium signing off.